Yo, Elliot, can you describe how to determine when you're allowing life to unfold versus being overly passive? Now, the very first thing I want to do is address this statement, right? This is something that I say quite often, and it's an integral part of this program, right? Allowing your life to unfold, or better yet, allowing God to reveal your path to you. How is that uh, not being lazy, right? It sounds like we're being overly passive, right? I'm not attacking life. I'm not going to get life. I'm not trying to make something happen. First, we have to observe the mindset that's associated with this go get up grind make it happen uh when you work through the lessons in this program you're going to hear me talk on one specific commandment called uh thou shalt act and so i make a strong distinction in that lesson between activity and action and you'll come to learn that activity is born out of fear. Activity is when we can't rest because we're worried that we're behind schedule or we need to hurry up and get something or we need to strive and fight and someone's coming to take it away from us or uh, you know we need to keep up with the Joneses or this sense of lack in our lives or low self-esteem because we don't have certain things. That's all born out of fear. Most of our quote unquote actions right we, we falsely call them actions or activities and activity comes from a restless mind someone who's not settled in himself someone who is not allowing himself to be and this is why this is such a critical conversation for the king transformation program because a large part of what we're aiming to do is to reconcile the turmoil between the four aspects of the male archetype, our being, right? And so I often talk about thinking, feeling, doing, and being, right? And according to Robert Moore in his amazing book, King Warrior, Magician Lover, each one of those four aspects of what Carl Jung calls the quadrated psyche can be lined up with mythological language. It can be described through mythological language. And why is mythological language so important? Mythological, mythological language is important because we've come to know ourselves as human beings, not through schools, right? Schools is a new invention, but through stories told us by our ancestors. These are timeless stories cross-cultural stories all cultures have them there are always some aspect of the king right uh, a warrior a magician or or a priest right shaman and lovers and lovers are also not just you know someone who who, who appreciates and wants to have sex or or, or even, you know, our, asp our concept of it is like music and art. But a lover is a farmer, somebody who cultivates and cares for something. A lover is a farmer uh, and a, farmer, a, a lover is a family man, right? Someone who's cultivating a family, growing something, right? So we can really relate to thinking, right? What do you do when you're thinking? Ruminating, spinning, right? Spinning the wheels, spinning the gears, thinking, right? That aspect is our magician. Now, this is not called the magician transformation program, right? right? We're looking for self-actualization. The magician is only one part of ourself. We are very familiar with doing, right? And so myself and many of you in this program are very adept at activity, doing stuff, right? We grind, you might say, right? Get up and get going, right? That attitude is associated with the inner aspect of being a warrior. Beautiful stuff. You need that. You need both. You need your magician, you need your, you need your thinker, right? You need your existential aspect, right? That's your magician. You also need your grounded aspect, your fighter, your warrior. You also need that lover aspect. That lover aspect, once again, is what allows us to be generative, right? Through the generation of family, even in our work, right? In our relationships, it's giving care, giving love. Cultivation is the best way I can describe what a lover actually does. Now, that's thinking, that's doing, 
that's feeling, right? Being is associated with the king. Now that sounds sort of mystical, right? Like, what do you mean by being, right? Like, how do you do being, right? What do you, how do you think up being, right? What does being feel like? Well, the very first thing I want to do is to draw to your attention that it's easy to describe being through the negative aspect first by saying, well, it's not thinking, it's not doing, it's not feeling. It's being an empty vessel, right? Being a hollow reed, right? What is it? What's a hollow reed, right? I used to play the, I used to play the saxophone when I was a kid, right? I was actually pretty good at it. And at the, at the end of your saxophone, you put a reed, right? And it's hollow, meaning like it, air, right? Spirit needs to flow through it. If there's an obstacle in my reed, I'm trying to play this instrument. If there's an obstacle in my reed, that music that's being played through it is going to be herky jerky and perverted ain't gonna sound right because the reed is clogged up when we're allowing ourselves to be we drop all things that clog up god's ability to breathe life into us breathe life through us to act through us this is this is what is meant by being one with the force right those of you guys who are who are, who are Star Wars fans, right? Because a lot of this can be can be described in, in in that fashion. It's being, it's walking with God, being one with the Force. It's the Tao, if you're of an Eastern mindset, right? It's the Tao. It is, and if you read the work of Dao, of Lao Tzu, the founder of Taoism, he says it in many different ways in a very poetic manner that I'm going to botch right now that a man who's trying or striving or reaching or needing is not following the pace of nature or better yet here's how Ralph Waldo Emerson says it he says take the pace of nature her virtue is patience right now, when we're trying and we're striving and we're reaching and we're thinking and we're grilling and all these things, we're not behaving like nature. Nature is persisted by the grace of God. Birds don't, this is from Jesus, birds don't worry about what they're going to eat today, right? But yet they're fed every single day. And he goes on to say, God loves you to such a degree I don't want to say more so than the bird, but he has higher expectations and goals and, 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 uh, and missions for human beings than for a bird. If the bird's going to get what the bird needs every single day so it could <whistles> chirp and whatever the hell a bird does, don't you think you'll be taken care of? Why worry? He uses the word toil and spin, right? He says, the lilies in the field neither toil nor spin nor gather and store, right? They don't need to do that because God affords them a grace and God affords you a grace as well in your life. So back to your question, you're saying, can you determine when you're allowing things to unfold, i.e. being, right? Versus being overly passive. And the answer is wrapped up in the distinction between activity in action. Now, I already spoke about how activity comes from an anxious place. Now, what makes you anxious? Your thoughts, your feelings, and the body makes you anxious. The body tells you when it needs to eat. The body tells you when it needs to sleep. These are things that are constantly shouting at us or clogging our read, right? They take up, our, they take up a lot of energy to associate with. When we drop those things and we allow ourselves to be, there's stillness. Now, don't get it confused. Stillness isn't necessarily inactivity or, or better yet, passivity. Stillness is not passivity. Stillness is potential, right? So, for example, uh, how, how can I use this? Kinetic energy, right? Am I using that word? There's potential energy and there's kinetic energy, right? I don't know if I'm going to do this justice in terms of talking physics. Let me, let me use as I often do, nature, because I'm looking out the window right now and I've got soil. There's soil on the ground there. That soil is totally still, but that soil can be totally fruitful if 
a seed is dropped in it. What does that mean? That means that soil that's totally still has the potential of an orchard, a forest, right? The potential is latent in there, but it does nothing until a seed is planted. There's potential in the soil, but not until a seed is planted does it bear any fruit. It works the same way for us. When we allow ourselves to be still, a blank slate, being receptive like that soil, God can more readily drop a seed on us. This is why when we are actively looking for something, very basic, you're looking for your keys. In fact, yesterday, I was looking for my water bottle. I was looking for my water bottle. I couldn't find my water bottle yesterday. And as I started to recognize myself becoming anxious, right? A little anxious, right? Because I, I got to get out of here. I need to find my water bottle. I stopped and I said, okay, forget the water bottle. And I went about my day. And five minutes later, as soon as I stopped looking, it popped into my head. Boom. Oh yeah, your water's in the office, Elliot. I didn't even have, it, it wasn't mu any more than a few seconds after I dropped the issue completely. Stopped thinking about it, stopped feeling about it, stopped frantically doing shit about it. I stopped and it was like, Oh yeah, it's in my water. It's in my office. How many times have you done that with your keys? How many times have you done that with anything in your life? How many times have you sought after a woman? Think about that. Trying to get with that girl, calling her, thinking about her, knocking on her door, right? Have you noticed that when you leave her alone, have you noticed when you stop thinking about her? Have you noticed when you're not wrapped up in imagination? and castle building in the sky about her, all of a sudden, she comes to you? They say women are like cats, right? You leave them alone, they come to you. But the minute you chase them, they'll run. This is how life uh, 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 works. This is, this is what, how life is. If we just back off, we just relax, we just allow ourselves to be, the things that we want will come to us. Let it come to you. Let it come to you. Now, once again, your question is, well, what's the difference between that being overly passive? The difference is that when, act, when that seed is dropped, action is expected. How many times have you seen someone or you yourself have an incredible opportunity land on their desk and then, well, no, I could never do that. Oh, no, I, that's not for me. Oh no, uh, that's gonna require too much. My whole life is going to have to change. I'm going to have to move. I'm going to have to dump my girlfriend. I'm going to have to start getting up early in the morning. No, 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 I can't do that, right? This is what happens so many times that keeps men stuck. We're, we're, we're wanting something, right? We're reaching for something. And then maybe sometimes, and, and oftentimes it happens for me, then you, then you stop, then you stop. This has happened to me before. And then months or maybe even years later, it shows up and you're not prepared for it and you reject it. Now that's being passive. That kind of passivity is an active passivity. It's an effeminacy. It's an attachment to pleasure and an avoidance of pain. And we all know that every opportunity shows up dressed in overalls. It means work. So when something comes to you, when God drops that seed, when that seed drops on that soil, the work starts immediately. I often use the example, I used cat as, as an example before also too. I used, I used uh, cat as an example with regard to women, but look how it works in your life. Or just watch the, the animal cat itself. Cats are crazy, right? Because cats will just sit. They'll just sit. They'll just sit there. I used to have a cat. Right? And she would just, boom, plot. And her eyes are just kind of like creep. Just creeping eyes. Not doing much. Preserving its energy. But I tell you what. If you sneak up on that cat or there's a loud sound that cat hears or a mouse goes running right by that cat, even though he's chilling. She's just chilling, sleeping. One eye open. Ears are kind of like tweaking but not doing much. As soon as that stimulus hits, that cat can go from zero to 100. Zero to 100. Zero to 100 is how you take those opportunities when they land in your lap. Humming, hawing, 
overthinking, passing on it is passive. And that's what you want to avoid, my man. So I will leave you with this. When you find yourself overly aggressive, overly attached, overly striding, needing, and, and, and scratching, and clawing for something, back off, bro. Be it with your business and money, be it with women, be it with your training. How many times have you learned? We all know if we lift that the magic don't happen in the gym. How many guys have you known or have you known yourself that overdo it in the gym? Like I'm just training every day. And guess what happens? It's the law of diminishing returns. You get less. But if you train a little less, right, you back off a little bit like I did. I'm getting ready for a strongman show, right? And I've been busting my face for the past three months, right? Like overdoing it in a way because I was, I was planning on doing a show that was in August. So I was going hard because I thought it was coming up. But then when I realized it was being pushed back to October, you know what I did for the past month? I backed off my training completely. I was just burnt out, to be completely honest with you. I was getting burnt out. And as a result, I started doing different kinds of workouts, doing more, more rehabilitation, more being, right? Just following my intuition, relaxing my body, stretching if I need to. I went this week to try out some of my events for the show that's coming up. And I'm telling you, I've, I've, I've done everything easy. I've been taking it really easy, backed off my intensity. I don't even eat as much, right? I backed off the intensity of shoving food in my mouth. That's why I look a little bit leaner. I went and tried all my, I tried a bunch of my uh, events this week. You could even see it on my Shrunk Camp channel. I did uh, farmer's carries for the first time in, in probably two months. Boy, I felt stronger than ever. Stronger than ever by doing nothing. Isn't that crazy? Isn't that strange? Isn't that magical how amazing our lives can be if we just allow ourselves to be? So I hope that helps clear things up for you, dude. Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot. I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent King Transformation classes with my students where, among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week and we speak on things as it relates to becoming kings in our lives and fitness business and with women. If that sounds like you and you want to join a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day in every way in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word King, K-I-N-G, and then me and my team will get back to the details to see if you qualify. I really hope to see you at the next meeting. Done.